dazu. Morning, guys. It's uh, 3D scanning day. So we're uh, got our fancy schmancy 3D scanning person coming. And basically we're gonna refine a lot of what we already know, but now we're gonna make sure like a lot of stuff is really, really like, it's gonna check out, you know, the oil pan's gonna clear every sway bar, you know, the exhaust, the drive line, angle, all that stuff. Um, it also means a lot of like different billet custom pieces, like maybe a front subframe could exist soon. So got a fancy ass expensive laptop because the old one wasn't gonna take it. So got that set up, got a couple K motors ready to go, got the cars, got the car, got the display cars. You know, we're gonna end up scanning those as well. So uh, this poor guy doesn't know what he's in for, but. for the pressure, well, mostly because we only work under pressure. Uh, we're very undisciplined, but we also have a Beamer challenge that we'd like to debut the car at in eight days. And before then, Hoonigan is supposed to come visit the car. Um, and they asked if it was running. We may have said yes. It will be when they get here, probably. <laughs> Hello, darkness, my old friend. So we're starting with the hard part, the transmissions. So we put all the three units that we're going to be testing, that's the Jetrag 260, the ZF, and the 336 speed, scanning them all. So that way, ideally, we're trying to use the same components to mount them all. They're all different in length and stuff like that, but the E30 has a sliding rail for the transmission, which makes it pretty accommodating. Um, the one that is a little longer than the rest of them and maybe won't work that way is the six speed from the 330. But between all the data, we'll, we'll have everything. We'll even have the hangar locations. So similar to the transmissions, we also have three different motors. So we're testing different variations of oil pans, different intakes, different clutch setups, all kinds of stuff, regular aftermarket accessories and then OEM ones. So between this, we're gonna align them all. So that way we would actually be able to tell if technically any combo would be possible with our motor mounts. So, that's how much thought we're like giving this kind of stuff. Like this is why it's taking so long to get out because we're just doing it right. And that takes a lot of data, a lot of capital to end up doing this, but it's gonna be very factory-like. I mean, some of these things have air conditioning on them as well. So that'd be pretty cool. This is the part I'm the most excited about. These have been our 3D models now for some time. You know, one of the, the shipping guys had wrecked his E30 and he was junking it and it just occurred to us that, you know, we should build these things out. And at the time we were going to Washington for the E30 picnic and we thought, what best way to showcase our products? But it's also now become one of those things though where we actually use it to product development, make sure some clearances, help customers with very specific questions, you know, caliper brake clearance and line distance and all that. So the best thing to do is definitely digitize this. That means that we can put any motor, any combo of any kind in an E30 at this point, you know? So yeah, I mean, this is, this is huge. Like this has been something, me personally, I've been waiting on for a very long time. So I'm nerding out. Figured I'd just put that out there, that it's everything actually is lining up to factory specs. It was that, that wrecked the car but the car had a bunch of cancer anyway, so we're not building parts off of a car that's bent. In case you need to know.
So although it still looks like an empty engine bay, uh, we made a lot of progress today. Lots of cool scans. Uh, I mean, we'll know every single configuration where the coolant hoses are going to be, the fuel hoses, driveline angle, every type of accessory. So a lot of cool stuff that came out of there uh, today. So we're not actually worried about this because I mean, with our machining capabilities, this is one of those things that like having that kind of data is amazing. So we're going to see you guys on Thursday with an update. I'm going to get started tonight. Got some quiet in the shop after business hours. So uh, now's the time to put in some work on these things and see you guys on Thursday. All right, guys. So we are starting with uh, some 3D printing to reverse engineer some of these scans that we did. We're basically putting everything into the uh, 3D printer. So this is at 100%. Obviously, it's not going to fit the build. So what we're going to do is we're going to scale everything to about 25-10% um, and then fit everything. And it, how this makes it, this basically makes it where it's like super accurate. Um, so I'm going to scale this thing to 10%. We like the minions, you know. Little bitty toilet. Oh, look at you, a little tiny toilet for a little tiny baby to down like that. So there it is, a 10% subframe. And then we're gonna do the same thing for the oil pan and the motor mounts and all that. So technically we'll have a 10% scale model of what we're gonna build, we hope. And then what's the purpose? To make sure everything fits before I machine it, 100%. That's the reason we're printing this, so that we can make sure that everything fits before it even hits the CNC's, because we're hogging these things out of big monster blocks right now. So time to miss is not on the machines. Sometimes we just need a visual representation. <laughs> it's a bad transmission for those of you guys before, before the, the BMW army goes up, goes up and you know, it's, just, it's a dead transmission. It's for the greater good. It's moving. Boom shakalaka! The part we need. <laughs> we got 3D scans, we got all that, but you know, it's nice to just walk over the CNC and just check it. So, that was cut the block. <laughs> <laughs> Satisfying. So this is our version one of the Bella piece. You can see here we have all the uh, corrections we need to make for the uh, newer version. And then here is version two. Look at that. Compared to that. And then when we look on the inside, 
you can see how we made it where it's kind of like a hill so it's the oil is pushed back all back into the oil pickup area and then you can see how it has a groove here where the one of the pieces will register to when it comes to time to mate it here's our billet adapter piece for the k motor to bmw transmission and yeah so we have a this is our dead motor that we're using for mocking up stuff like that uh comes in handy so that we're testing it here first before that way we're not pulling the motor out testing it making sure it's good or not and then we put it back on none of that is just dead motor it's here it's next to the machines easy to work with this is our prototyping area right now this is pretty much done matt's working on the bottom piece that actually is going to carry the oil and then the lid that's going to seal everything in so these are the uh, holes i was talking about where the m42 style pan will bolt into but also the pickup uh, part of the pan is going to bolt into it and there's going to be a cover that's going to come all around and seal it with o-rings and uh, rtv she nice and this is the slot i think for the uh, dipstick this is where it ends uh, or pretty much where it goes probably won't use it we're probably still going to do the uh we're going to put a uh, two holes for a uh, dipstick that way the uh the builder whichever route he's going with his build he has two ways to mount the dipstick so if it's over here it's not in the way of like the turbo if they're going to turbo it or if they're doing the nice giant uh intake on this side it's not in the way of the intake it's a modular a uh, lot of options they're gonna be nice